back to Visual Novel Book Club. I'm your pal, Slow Beef. With me, of course, my good friend, Polahoko. Good evening. Turbo C. Hello. Devac. Rise and shine, Ursine. Kind of sorry I went to you. And Jim. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, okay, so this week... Sorry for Devac, uh, we you have... couldn't, couldn't be here today. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, have... so we pushed me into somebody else's death animation. Um, so, uh... Where were we? Okay, so we're doing chapter three, and this time we were reading all the way through the investigation as a little change of pace. Oh, this chapter started with, uh, we're back, we see a little bit more of the outside world, and uh, meteors are falling from the sky in a, in a news broadcast. And they're like, oh god, what is this? Is this the end of the world? This is not a movie, this is not edited footage, this is not a test. It literally says the sky is falling. Oh <laughs> to be fair, I could I could imagine that being said on the news, though. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Whatever's happening to the world outside is incredibly cliche, so we better <laughs> not think too hard about it. <laughs> Chapter three opens with the title "Transfer Student from Beyond the Grave." I really like that chapter title. I will say. Yes. Very good. I was very interested to see what on earth this could be. So we open in, um, I believe we're in Maki's uh, Ultimate Research Lab, which mm -hmm. is full of guns. It's, and other weapons. Yeah, just, and there's like a red hood. There's, it's a whole, it's very dramatic. But yeah, just, just uh, but they're not, um, if you click on them, they're not all, they're not real guns. They're like airsoft guns, because if they gave the kids a bunch of automated weapons then they could <laughs> fight back against Monokuma. So they're not I didn't, that. I didn't know that. I thought yeah, I if you examine them, no then Shuichi's to, like, no huh. To use guns. Yeah, he's like, no, we, we would all be able to kill to kill the, the robot bears if we all had a bunch of fucking semi automatic rifles, so they don't they're not real. I don't think that that would do much against the Exosols though. I was gonna say I don't know. But also, they point out that um, if what's her face had had access to Maki. guns, uh, no, the um, the maid uh, Kurumi. 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 If she had had access to guns, she probably would have killed everybody else to get out. That's Bro true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that yeah. somebody could have just killed everybody. Which is a bit weird, actually, because uh, in the I think at least the first game, I forget about the second one. They mentioned you can't kill more than two people. Specifically oh. to prevent that rule, this game they did not. Huh? Yeah, that's actually yeah, that's one of the rules in the first game. But like, yeah, I, yeah, I guess I don't know. You, you, you're right though; they didn't mention that in this one. But um, yeah. I guess because it's sort of irrelevant if you're you you kind of already guessed that by this point. I don't know. Right? Yeah, you you would be literally the last person standing. There wouldn't be a point to a trial or anything. But yeah. All right, but yeah, but like, again, yeah, not mentioned in this game for whatever reason. Because they want people to plan elaborate murders and not go all Hunger Games on each other. Maybe. I don't know, honestly. Anyway, in the beginning of chapter three, the Mono Kids are taken over. Monokuma appears, and so do the remaining Mono Cubs, and they're like, and Mono Dam is like. This is our town now, Pops. <laughs> and uh, Monokuma is like, my own cubs! And he like fritzes out and loses like big patches of hair. Mm -hmm. And is just frozen. Like he like, um, like his program crashed. Like he just 404s and just sits there like, ugh. <laughs> and that's it. And then, the, and then he's like that for a really long time. Yeah. I, I was starting to really wonder because, you know, as we mentioned earlier, like the voice, the original voice actress for Mono Kuma couldn't do the role in this game. So I was like, wow, maybe, maybe they are just going to have Mono Dom and uh, the other two to kind of just take over at this point, you know? It's really, so that, so Mono Kuma's out. I, I sort of had the same th thought, but I was like, Mono Dam was getting uh, really annoying this chapter. So I was, <laughs> I was sort of hoping that was not the case. I, I didn't mind Mono Dam. He just wants everyone to get along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. By any means necessary. Yeah. So we get items. We get three, three items. Yeah, 
items this time. And we get yep. to open more things. The magic uh, hammer, the ninja scroll, and the... Oh, what is it? Pixel key. One. The pixel key, yeah. yeah. Pixel For the key pixel opens. door. The pixel door, mm -hmm. yeah, to the, which goes to the fourth floor. There's another... So many floors, oh my god. Um... And it's like a spooky attic. It's like a to it's like a totally different vibe than the other floors. I love it. Yeah, I really like it too. It's real scary in there. Um, I keep waiting for something to pop out at me, honestly. The the part that I like the most is the transition. So up there is Corecchio's lab, the uh, mm. anthropologist lab, and right. uh, Angie's lab, the artist lab. And when you move between them, there's like a red hallway. And I thought that was really creepy. It's got like statues and it's got like a thing on the wall that's like, oh, some other lab will probably be here later. Yeah, it gives um, off the vibe really of, of like a like an abandoned Japanese village. Yeah, it's, yeah it's or like some kind of... It feels like my own personal like, hell. I hate it. <laughs> oh, it's, no. it's some kind of like J-horror basement thing. Yeah. I uh, there's there's three rooms in it, which I like a lot too. I don't know if we want to go into the lab. Yes. I mean, th talk about the rooms. Who's in there? The, this is the, well, when you, the door opens, but you know how, like, so when you get into a new room, it kind of builds up, like, the game props up walls and everything, like, for the tra room transitions? When you open one door, you'll see, like, Monosuke just standing there, and the room kind of builds up in front of him. And he's a spooky and, ghost. Yeah, I think he has the two little fires around him. Yeah, and he's got, I like, a tail. I always forget what that's about. Little yeah. Ghost tail. Yeah, and the same, and then it, there's, like I said, there's three. Another room has um, the second Monokid. Mono Monokid, thank you. And the third has Monokuma himself. Monokuma's uh, in the middle room, which I thought he's was, in the middle like, room. You're what right. What does that mean? Who knows? Right. So it's like a silly little thing, but it is kind of neat. I don't know. <laughs> like it's it also just a silly makes you think that Monokuma's really dead. Like <laughs> yep, because yeah. the ghost is in that room. I was going the <laughs> completely existential route of do robots have souls? <laughs> And this is something presumably only the player sees, because mm -hmm. the room builds up in front of it, and nobody comments on it or anything. So I thought it was some kind of bug for someone at first. to say something. Yeah, I didn't know what it was about, but I, I, I was kind of figuring this is just kind of like a little cute thing that developers did or whatever, you know, to kind of like put you a little, put you a little, knock you a little off balance, you know. It's a little spooky. Yes. Yep. And. Uh... So the, the labs that are up here, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Ultimate Anthropologist Lab because it's a huge museum and it's like way too tall. It's like yeah, it's, it's like seven stories up or something like you know like impossibly tall. But there's so much stuff there and it's like oh here's all these like super important cultural artifacts from all over the world and. Um, how did all that stuff get there if it's real? Which Kios it, it reacts as if like, oh, well, some like all these things are are real. Um, they're not replicas. Um, it sort of supports the whole like the world has ended outside, and we took the remaining pieces of civilization and put them here. <laughs> See, I I wondered about that, but it's also like he talks about like this this scroll and like I I, I sort of read it as like this is something that only the ultimate anthropologist would care about like sure some museum would would like to have it but no one knows where it is etc yeah i guess it could I don't but know. it could all be a bunch of like hidden like hidden i don't know but it, it particularly focuses on um stuff that's in the front is related to a like mysterious ghost story type village called the caged dog village and that they had this forbidden seance ritual and it was particular it was all it's all black magic and Keo's like I already memorized the whole book but it's so cool to see it in person here <laughs> <laughs> which is great I couldn't look this up obviously because I'd get a bunch of information that I don't want but is is this based on a real village or a real thing does anybody know I don't think so but I don't know for certain I'm gonna guess based on events a little a little later in this podcast we'll talk about it seems like made up. Okay. But again, I don't know for sure. I'll look it up right now. I'm not afraid. It could be it could be based 
loosely on some real real mythology. Yeah. Um, but Keo's real excited. He really he really yeah. wants a seance. He is just like, please, please, can we do a seance? Like this is. <laughs> <laughs> he's great. Oh man, yeah. I hope he's not the murderer. He's <laughs> uh. What do you call it? Keo's into the occult more than I would have thought. Like an anthropologist would be. In a way, I, I guess maybe not. Maybe like with those. I mean, it's it's definitely like, like oh, he has like a, a narrow like focus of of expertise, particularly in occult practices between cultures. Right. But still, occult practices across all cultures across all time is still pretty wide. Fair. He. Yeah, I don't know. He's a he's a unique one. That's for certain. <laughs> um, and then the other lab is the Ultimate Artist Lab, which is Angie's lab, and it I like how this locked. lab looks. Oh. Yeah, it looks a lot more like just an art space. Yeah, it's just an art studio with the uh, you know the paints on the floor, the big chunks of wax for wax sculptures, like kind of ink Bags. splotches up on the walls. Yeah, there's loads of wax, and the game does make you examine it before you can leave. Oh. And uh, and I do want to. Um, yeah, I don't want to gloss over what you said before too, but yes, this this is this lab locks. Uh, there is a cylinder lock on the front door, which is your standard like insert a key and the, the knob won't turn unless you have the key inserted. You know that kind of lock. Um, it's a tumbler thing, and then the back door to it though has a deadbolt, right? Well, Am I getting that no, right? It's not deadbolt. A deadbolt. It's just a it's just a latch like to a bathroom stall. Like, oh, clack. you're right, you're right. It's, it's, sorry. It's, it's, it's the other kind. It's very much like a toilet stall effect, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you slide it on. It's sliding lock, I guess. I don't know what that lock is called, yeah. but... It looks like... I mean, it looks like if you, like, were really... If you were really locked out, that you could probably, like, wiggle that door until it opened. I don't know. Yeah. And the fourth floor kind of wrap... Like, you can... Out from the outside, you can go into her lab on either entrance. Which is unique also, I think, among the labs, but... And, uh, and the reason why it can be locked is uh, because Angie can't, like, work on her... She can't, like, channel Atua or whatever to work on her art unless she's, like, locked. The door's locked. Like, she's completely focused and, like, in solitude. Mm hmm And so they were like, wow, you really do know everything about us. And then, uh, and then the mono kids arrive... Mono cubs arrive, and they're like... Here's here's the key. We'll give you a copy so you can get in and out of the room, Angie. And uh, and then Monodam's like, wait, no, because then like if I, I I don't know because then it's like oh somebody could get access to the room yeah. or something. Anyway, Monodam eats the yeah. key. His reasoning right. is keys are mysterious and someone might use it for murder. Yeah, yeah, he's sort of just like let's let's be open and friendly with each other. No locked doors. Yeah, yeah. Monodam doesn't want. And he acts to like kill yeah. each other. He acts like he doesn't want the killing game to go on. Which is weird for someone that is a murderer of his own kind. Right. And the running gag is that he wants Manafini and Mano's Monotaro. Monotaro, thank you, to get along, but it's kind of like threatening them to get along. Like, you'd better be getting along or else, you know, that kind of thing. And they're like kinda of scared of it. Yeah, him. there's I there's mean a it's scene not, later it's comically, on. it's not. Yeah, there's a scene Sorry. later on where like, Monotara messes something up, and yeah. Monophony is like, oh, uh, you messed it up. And Monodom's like, well, you could have helped him. Like, it, when you saw Monotara yeah. messing up, you could have helped him. So, as a punishment, you have to punish him. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So, that's life without Monokuma, more or less. And, but it also is like, if, if Monodam really doesn't want the killing game to go on, then couldn't all the kids be like, look, Monokuma's out of the picture temporarily, like, why don't you just fucking let us go? He does, he's, emphasizes that he wants everybody to get along, and he wants them to get closer. But he also th seems to think that one of the ways they can get closer is via murder. Like, there's yeah, no, oh, that's right. <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, consistency at all. <laughs> um, I honestly forget what the other two keys lock. Uh, or the unlock, ninja statue. You go to the ninja statue outside and give it right. a scroll, and it becomes Tenko's uh, ultimate Aikido lab, and it's a dojo. And um, Tenko, Tenko got a little bit more points back from me for the fact that um, 
she normally like can't really like she's normally like so brash and and like oblivious but when she spars with people and her like her fighting is just flipping people like <laughs> she she like gets flipped he's like not ready for it right and Himiko mm-hmm. is also there and she gets flipped but when when she flips them and like fights with them she's like oh i completely understand your emotions now and she like says it to them of like oh you're you're not confident or you're this you need to do this you're feeling like this and I thought that was cute, that she, like, didn't understand them, but then when she fought with them for a second, she immediately, like, understood everything about how they were feeling. It's like if you went to a therapist and they just put you in a chokehold. And all she does is slam them on the ground. Like, it's not even a fight. And she, because she has that, and she has, I think they play that sound during the scene. She has that, like, key sound that you'll hear in her dialogue box every so often yeah yeah this is like the one time i found that endearing like usually it's kind of like stupid but you get the sort of comical picture of her flipping them more or less so yeah her lab is also pretty cool it has like a giant wooden like (laughs) sparring robot it's like huge it's like two stories (laughs) tall (laughs) made of wood like it's great yeah i have no idea how they're supposed to use that but i'm really looking forward to it it's got a bunch of platforms, too, just hanging off. It's like... Yeah, it's like right. a boss fight room. I love it. Mm-hmm. It looks like something that I didn't got in. It really does. <laughs> yeah, I really... Totally. I, I doubt that that giant wooden sparring robot is gonna, like, do anything. But, like, I really hope it does. Him- Himiko is with you when you go to the dojo. And uh, Tanko flips her, too. And what I do like is... I don't realize it because they space it out, but I have the screenshots here. And it's exactly the same picture, but Suichi and Himiko are just swapped in and out of each other. Like, you can animate it in and out. Yeah. And, yeah. like, just change so you... them. Which I'm doing right now, as we're speaking, actually. So <laughs> It's funny. Yes. Was it just those two, or was there a third person that got flipped? I feel... No, it's just... I, I feel I... like I would have screenshotted that. Okay. I just remember being treated... I noticed, yeah, that the pictures were exactly the same. I was like... How many times are they going to do this? So I, I must have imagined a third person myself being flipped by Tenko. It might, it, honestly though, too, there might be a situation where if you maybe you go back to the dojo and they have another scene or something. I don't know. It, you know, don't don't take my word for it just because I saw it too. You know. <laughs> so that was that was funny. So that was pleasant. I, I, th- I was thought I was ready. I was going to be annoyed by Tenko again forever. I'm, but that was. I'm glad bad. she's final. I'm glad she's finally coming into her own. <laughs> yeah, anyway. great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, when we leave uh, Tenko's lab, then we uh, see Mew inviting Kibo to her lab, um, and and Chuichi's like, "Oh, maybe I should follow them." And uh, uh, somebody else talk about this. I forget, but like, I think <laughs> something on the order of Mew is like upgrading him. But when you get there, it's like he's looks like he's sort of lying on the ground and she's on top of him. And it's supposed to be like they're like having sex, like her boobs are pushed up against him and all that, you know. And uh, I the, the dialogue is kind of sexual. I sort of forget exactly what they say. Yeah, but it's, like, it's oh. very like the pencil or the pen scene from uh, Ever 17. <laughs> oh, I yeah, was, yeah. I totally. was so confused for a second. I thought you were going to go like the Dark Knight or something. <laughs> yes, it's just like the pencil like scene from the Dark Knight. How about a magic trick and the Joker has sex with all of them? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Let's make this virginity I, I... disappear. Oh my god. Uh, so, um, <laughs> wow, I can't believe I said that on this podcast. <laughs> Please remember the title and the Joker had sex with all of them. All right, anyway. Oh, no. So yeah, there's there's just like an er- erotic robot maintenance, and and yeah. that's that's a thing, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Very ven- very thin double entendres. Oh yeah, real. It's like it's like oh you're like, all clogged up. I guess I'm gonna have to release you, and you know yeah. oh, oh yeah, you're touching I've been, me there. That's what happened. Yeah, that could. I've been neglecting my needs ever since I've gotten here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Shuichi's like, I better just leave. Good. And if you try to go back, he's like. I'm sure I didn't hear that right. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of We thing. talked about I... this a little in the pre-show, but I'm, I'm kind of into the... Not like the Robophilia, but I'm into, like, Mew and Kibo together. I, in my notes, I, wrote, I just wrote, Shuichi, let the fuck. <laughs> 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 Shuichi. 
Maybe he has a look. love key. I don't know. This isn't the romance that I wanted, but it's fine. I I think they will be good for each other. I mean, is there any who else? Who else can we ship in this? Is in this miserable game? Gonta. And who? Uh, bugs. Wow. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, hold on, wait. Keep referencing him seeing a bug. <laughs> you never know. I don't know. New episode title would be Ganta and Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> now shipping colon Ganta and Bugs. I mean, I definitely after all the the training sessions and stuff, like I definitely ship Shuichi and Kaito a little bit, like. Although, uh, we of course all know that Kaito is still, like, totally in love with Kaede, but, like, Shuiji, the way he talks about Kaito is really funny. <laughs> and really good. It's like, wow, no one's ever called me bro before. <laughs> like, oh, damn, Shuiji. Speaking of uh, Kaito and Shuiji, I actually got um, the Love Hotel with uh, Kaito this session. Oh, no, holy sh shit. Whoa. Uh, did we want... I don't... I did we decide whether we want to talk about those? It's not spoilery at all. Uh, this scene with Kaito. Right, those aren't like plot stuff, right? Yeah, it's all, like non uh, Yeah, yeah. Of so yeah, I'll think it's spoilery. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, so this one is about uh, in in Kaito's sort of vision. Uh, Shuichi is a uh, a pilot, and Kaito is also a pilot, and they keep having like these rival duels against each other, and they've each. <laughs> won uh, 99 times so this final one will decide it all and like there's this big tension of like there's hey there's something I want to say to you after I win or something like that and Kaido also keeps berating it because Shuichi doesn't know how to get into it into his oh own world God. but like I like after the second <laughs> after the second time you kind of understand what these are where it's like Shuichi's going in with like knowledge of who he is but it's like the other character's been hypnotized or whatever to like think that this is some sort of fantasy or whatever is it their fantasy though it's the other their fantasy, fantasy? Yeah. yes it is this oh is God. kaito's fantasy so like his his fantasy is you know having a rival duel against someone and then after winning the hundredth time saying that he loves them i guess <laughs> so it, it was it was a very sweet scene God. I got me you in so the love good. hotel. Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm just trying to post pictures of like Suichi and the consent from all the trials. I can't find one for Kaido though. No, I'm so <laughs> so, I just love those. Anyway, sorry. So oh. I mean, what could possibly be in Miyu's love hotel scene? What could sort of depraved nonsense could be going on there? And it's just she hand holding. Yeah, she wants. She sees Shuichi as like her childhood friend, and she's revealing her secret that she loves him because he's always taking care of her. And then she says that she wants to have his baby because he doesn't. She doesn't want him to ever leave her. So that's the only way. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. So, it's super obvious that that was gonna be it. Oh, see, <laughs> yeah. I my my girlfriend uh, got this one and was describing it to me, and made it sound a lot more like sort of forced you know give me a child well so. she's still doing like the back and forth hey let's bone here on the couch you know so we put your you know but it's still <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's still the idea is you know I, let's have a fucking baby right now <laughs> <laughs> what is Shuichi's reaction to that she, oh he's like no that's it's too soon <laughs> or it's like no there's no way i could do it, that it's weird because like in the in the kaito fans he's like oh i have to i no matter what i have to fulfill the ideal that kaito has oh my so, God. Like, <laughs> shuichi's super gay i guess because like oh no matter God, what shuichi kaito was kaito. going to do he was he was down for it Oh yeah, Shuichi <laughs> vehemently refuses in this scene, and, and she's like, "Well, what? do you hate me that much? Do, are you gonna abandon me?" Well, I, I, let's be fair here. Like Kaido's kind of awesome. It's Kaido true. is a much, much better character. He's a very supportive friend as well. It's just he's what we're saying is Kaito's boyfriend material. <laughs> he's the luminary of the stars. <laughs> is he? I've never heard him say that before. Nah, I mean, I just made that up right now. <laughs> I don't know. He's also a scaredy cat, too. 
Yeah. Oh god. Awesome. Yeah, we'll yes, get to that we'll part. We'll get that into was so it later. Good. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so the last thing is, uh, well, if we if we go to the uh, the attic past those three mysterious doors, uh, we can. Well, Monokuma appears in his zombified state, but not not speaking, and sort of directs us to break some glass with the gold hammer. And so we break some stained glass with the gold hammer that's at the end of the hallway, and uh, behind it is uh, a big empty room with a bunch of broken TVs in it, and then a computer room. And in the middle of the computer room, there's a giant computer that looks like an Xbox. It's the Xbox One like, X. Wow. No, it's the, it's OG, it's OG Xbox. It looks like a That's dev kit from an OG Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> I'm saying Danganronpa V3 bought the only Xbox One X. <laughs> the only one. <laughs> I, I haven't heard anyone else gamer commentary. <laughs> I haven't heard anyone else buying. Am I right? Gamer? It's also it's also the size of the room of the whole room, just like an Xbox. <laughs> My gamer too. <laughs> so, uh, Monocubes mono mono appear, and uh, Monotaro uh, says that this computer can be used to create a new world, which is pretty serious, and I think that's that's the time that he slips up. Yeah, that's the time. <laughs> yeah, he says, oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to say that, was I? No, you weren't. <laughs> which leads back into the whole, like, is, like... You know, when they're plugged into those to those things on their heads, like is this is this all a simulation? Is that why resurrection is possible? I mean, is like, that why it says ultimate revival in the first chapter? I mean, a little bit of spoilers, but it doesn't. Ha nothing happens with it this reading, so like. Yeah. Mm. But it, but it's useless right now, and <laughs> it's yeah. just a big Xbox. Yep. And uh, and in the also in the room is another flashback light. So everybody shows up and uh, let's see they use do they use the flashback light. Um, Ma like Maki talks to everybody um, and everybody is kind of like, hey, you're the ultimate assassin. And she's like, yes. And she's like, I'm I, I hid it from all of you because I'm used to people trying to kill me once they find out my identity because they're afraid that if they don't then i'm gonna kill them first it's a pretty good reason yeah i mean if you're if everybody's like hey i'm the ultimate pianist hey i'm the ultimate cosplayer and then you throw down and you're like yo i'm the ultimate assassin welcome to the killing game like people might <laughs> be a little worried uh, yeah and especially just like hey, okay these are some new people that i get to introduce myself to no you're in a murder game so it's like okay well um Get, there goes my chances of becoming friends with these people. They're all going to think I'm here to kill them. Because yeah. I got the trump card. She lied about her ultimate. How do you get from ultimate assassin to, to ultimate babysitter? Like, what poster do you have to look at on the wall to, to get there? <laughs> uh, I don't want to spoil <laughs> anything, but this this does get brought up in her, uh, her social link. Ooh, maybe she used it as like a cover or something. Oh, we can talk about it later. With that, they uh, use the flashback light, and we see the funeral scene again. And this time, all the frames are filled in with the with the pictures of all all the kids. So it's not like we're gonna get um, one new one as, as as everybody dies. It's all of them. And uh, I did think that this was some sort. I, I like I I. Uh, did look at this screen for a long time trying to decide if it was like trying to s spell out some kind of message that would be cool but since it's translated I was like that's impossible but I still looked at it anyway um, and it, I, can, I didn't see any particularly meaningful patterns in it or anything but, uh, but that was it for the record by the way there is like kind of a hex string hidden in I think the opening movie of Danganronpa 2 and I haven't translated it because I was warned that if you translate it, it's actually spoilers. But I don't know what it says, and I kind of imagine... I, I would, I guess, I mean, this is totally a guess on my part, that in 3 they wouldn't do that again, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, you know? If there is some message, then it would be it with the, the Japanese and not English anyway, so, like, looking at, like, their names or something like that wouldn't, be, wouldn't mean anything in English anyway. 
Um, but I mean, there's, yeah, there's it. voiceover too. When you see the funeral, there's two people talking, and they said there was an accident when they were fleeing that group. The other person's like doesn't think it could be. An accident. They never actually say the the ultimate hunt. They never allude to what it was. Just that all of apparently the ultimates were fleeing that group, and something happened. So after that, um, we consider it weird like, that oh, we that's it? yeah that we remember that, which. It, it's not like they're a ghost outside of they're kind of looking at the ceremony. It's they're remembering the people being at that ceremony looking at themselves. So it's like, why is that? Yeah, and, and Kukichi uh, says, like, I'm disappointed in all of you, but he doesn't say why. So maybe he figured something out. Sorry, when does he say he's disappointed? After everybody's like, that's it? I don't understand. Like, then he's like, I'm disappointed in all of you, but he doesn't say say why. Yeah, what they say is that they can't accept it's real. Since they're alive, it can't be a real funeral. You know, because they they can't have died and, and, you know, that kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. then Kiki says, I'm disappointed. Oh, yeah. Somebody asked him, oh, are you disappointed in the vision? And he's like, no, I'm disappointed. Yeah, that they uh, dismiss it so out of hand so quickly. And Gonza's like, could we be dead? But they don't really come to any kind of conclusion about that. They don't really, like, sit down and talk about it or think about it very much. Because it's just not enough information. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have a moment of free time. Mm-hmm. And uh, then it, after that it's bedtime, or it's nighttime. And uh, mm-hmm. Shuichi goes to train with Kaito. And on the way, uh, if you talk Angie's uh, there, and if you talk to her... Chuichi's kind of like, oh, I'm worried that Angie is planning something. Because um, mm-hmm. we know that she's gotten Himiko to believe in Atua, and she's like, kind of talked to, like, you know, if we. She's already kind of said stuff along the lines of, if we just make it so that nobody wants to leave and we live here peacefully, then uh, forever, then the killing game will, won't continue and everything will be fine. We just have to not want to leave anymore. And uh, then when it's. Uh, Time to train. Who has Kaito brought to training? Maki. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Maki. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's Maki. <laughs> I know he said you anything. Want, you, want tell, you want to tell the class about it? <laughs> what, did, what did everyone forget? Uh, no, what did I forget? Uh, Just tell um, us about the scene. Um, uh, if I remember, so you have to remember too, I'm, I'm one ahead of all of you, so I, it's like. So, yeah, he he wants Maki to train with them, and she's like, what, we're out, gonna be out here, like, exercising, like, doing push-ups? Like, that's stupid. And he's like, no, 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 come on, just train with us, you know? I don't remember if he's given her a nickname now. No, not till next time. That comes a not little later. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. So, uh, I think does she, she doesn't agree to do it yet. Does she just leave no, then? She, she and then... just she just drops yeah. drops and does a hundred push ups immediately, right. okay. and, the, uh, and yeah. they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's at this yeah, point that Kaido gives right. her like the kind of spiel that he gave to Shuichi, where it's like, you know, you can't run away from your enemy. What's you know, look at yourself. What's your enemy? Like, you don't have to tell me, but you need to know what your enemy is, and you need to be able to fight right. against it. Which right. again is a really good speech, and. Kaito is the protagonist we should have had. <laughs> He's such a good friend. And, like, Maki continues to kind of, like, she goes along with it, and she's kind of like, why am I going along with them? Why yeah. why, why, am I agreeing to do this? Yeah. And I think it ends to, well, uh, it ends to at some point where it's like, Maki did her hundred, but they're not, like, neither of Shuichi or Kaito are even close to that. And oh, they're yeah, like, they, we're treated to a... Qu- a- uh, a little animation actually of yeah the two uh, trying it out um, Chuichi's going slow Maki's going super fast and counting like 98, 99, 100 and Kaito of course is just doing nothing it's like oh I did 500 before <clears throat> in fact she's so fast the, the screenshot I have of her is mid animation because there's a frame of her moving up and down that sort of fades really fast, but uh, yeah. Kaido's very Ron Burgundy. He's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't know if you heard, I already did a thousand. <laughs> yeah. And he just 
just keeps insisting on it, even though, like, he doesn't need to front to Shuichi at all. Like, and Shuichi knows that he's lying, but it's just kind of like... <laughs> this friendship thing where he's like, fine, you can lie about it, whatever. So there, so but Kaito is Shuichi starting to. But does insist on that. doing it again, a couple times, doesn't he? Yeah, he still he still goes to all the the training. And stuff. No, yeah, but I mean, like he he tells Kaito, all right, like, oh. we gotta we gotta do it for real, and then we forgot where we were at, so let's just start over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That sort of. Stuff. I think Maki does. Maki does like another hundred, right, or something? Or she's she's gone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's she, right. she does right. her hundred so. leaves. There's some, yeah. There, there's something. To, I, I just forget what it is. But Kaido makes some excuse they don't have to do it again or something. <laughs> but I love Kaido. So the next morning, the uh, Nano Cubs come on TV and they say good morning. There's an emergency meeting in the gym. They, mm -hmm. So uh, um. On our oh, and and so we head to the gym, and uh, if you have the item, oh yeah, I forgot. What is the, uh, what is the item? Uh, I think Gun it's of like man's um, passion? Gun of yeah. Man's Passion. Right. If you have that, uh, then you talk to Sumugi, and she's like, Angie wanted to have a pool party today, and there's like a like an aside, like an internal monologue that's like all the girls. I because I wrote it down. All the girls will be at the pool in swimsuits, and Monokuma appears. Oh yeah, Monokuma appears, and and you talk to Monokuma, and he appears to like psychically tell us that we must go to this pool party <laughs> because a zany yet romantic scene will surely play out there. Yeah, this is uh, this is a bit of a joke reference to Danganronpa One, in which. There's kind of like a scene where they have the opportunity to peek in the girls' locker room and everybody refuses it, but in New Game Plus, you can unlock an item that'll be like, what I think is also called Men's Passion. Monokuma makes a speech in that game too, like, oh, come on, you should go peek. It's every man's passion and you get that item. So that's kind of the reference there. It's you like know? live the fantasy, Shuichi. Yeah, exactly. This so aside, to do that. This aside just kind of comes out of nowhere and it's really uncharacteristic for shuichi so it's like yeah it's it's very plainly like kind of like an easter eggy kind of thing i guess or it's definitely funny especially because monokuma's fucking dead but still shows up and is like hey <laughs> maybe yeah, you want to do this <laughs> hey you want to see some t some tatas <laughs> i imagine him getting caught later and just like pointing to the Kamatos Monokuma. He's like, don't blame me. He's the one who told me to do it. Yeah, and everyone's like, give me a break. Anyway, they all go to the gym. Um, when, we, when you arrive at the gym, um, Mew makes a comment that she has been working on that big Xbox uh, like all night last night, and Kibo is like jealous. <laughs> Kibo yeah, is like is... sad that she was working on the big Xbox computer and not him. <laughs> this is our like love triangle here. <laughs> the real love triangle, God, finally. The real love triangle starts here. And this is also where we uh, start to realize that Angie's little cult is starting to grow outside of just her and Himiko. Yeah. And uh, Sumugi, Kibo, Gonta, and Tenko are all in this Atua cult. Although, it, it's pretty clear from the beginning that Tango's, like, faking it, because she just wants to make sure that Himiko is okay. So she's like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever, and the rest of them are like, oh, Atua, Atua. There's this recurring, like, picture where it's, like, to, to draw the people into the cult, they, like, ask about Atua, and she just kind of tells them whatever they want to hear. Like, uh, Tsumugi is like, oh, does Atua have, like, red eyes and black hair which is like some sort of reference i'm sure and and she's like yeah he does have that and then gonta you know she says to gonta oh Atua's is like a kind grandmother yeah mm -hmm. and i mean it's, uh, uh, it's an abstract concept it's fine um but uh but yeah so so all of a sudden the the atua cult is starting to grow which is mm. which seems weird because like Himiko was was way into the Atua stuff right away and then she put on the magic show and somebody died. 
So I just I'm like, what what made the two us seem more attractive between that time and now? It's not a two it's fault. But it was the magic show was oh well Angie it says a two wants everyone to be happy. So I'm gonna mm. put on a magic show to make everyone happy so they don't wanna leave. I could totally see Angie doing something like, Oh, you know, we need to this just proves we need to worship Atua more. Yeah, or or maybe it's just fool me once, shame on you, me, you, or you, whatever. Oh, God, I'm like, Shame I'm on the like, murderer. George Bush here. Um, so, but, like, <laughs> you know, oh, my God. Fool me, I can't fool me again. Fool like, me twice. Like, if, she, if she has another <laughs> magic show where someone dies, then she'll be like, all right. You know, the first time I was going to chalk it up to something else, but this is a Tua guy. <laughs> Hands on her hips. Wait a minute. Something isn't right here. <laughs> That's the episode title. Not going to get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me, can't get fooled again. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, uh, sorry. So, yeah. So, so I don't know. It's like, I mean, some people, in, I, like, I, I feel like, oh, well, they got Gonta because he's kind of gullible. Um, I'm surprised that the Tsunugi would be like so quickly won over, but she even was like, like I know that this is escapism, so maybe she's finally breaking down. Tsunugi uh, looks Kiba suspicious to me. Weird? Like Tsunugi keeps yeah. on, she has this thing she says now, where it's like, oh, I'm so plain. Uh, there's nothing special about me or whatever. Just ignore me. Yeah, she really emphasized it a lot this chapter. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know. I I, I feel like Kibo should not have been so easily swayed in a spiritual sense also considering why, how he why is a robot. Why is that, Dvac? Is that are you saying Roblox can't have religion? I mean, he was raised by a scientist. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. It's weird. Um, I just I guess I th I thought that he would not be as like gullible and he would be like, "Oh, this is a cult. I'm not taking part of your cult." But also, maybe he just wants to be part of groups so that he won't be bullied anymore. I don't know. Who who would do such a thing? Who would bully? So the motive, the motive, mono, mono cubs appear, and the motive is, as the title suggests, that we can resurrect someone who died. Mhm. Mm <laughs> and uh, they they they're like here here's the Necronomicon. Um, mm -hmm. here you go. You can use it to resurrect someone who died. I like that, where That's it's not motive. like a it's not like a stupid bear pun, or it's not like the Monokuma con. It's just straight up the Necronomicon. Yeah. yeah. And nobody makes a big deal about it. It's just like, oh yeah, you know, it's a book dead. You guys just, you know, deal with this. And everybody's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? And then they, they leave. And there's a big discussion about, like, well, mm -hmm. wait a minute. You can't actually bring people back from the dead. So if they can, then does that imply that no one has actually died? And it's been some kind of trick. And all the people who have died are really alive somewhere else. Right. Like, the issue is they were given a motive. But this is not like a special motive where you have to kill somebody to do this. It's just you have to do the ritual. And it's like, well, it if involves... they want us to do it, then that must be bad. Because... Every, all the motives are bad, right? But the the ritual involves burning the Necromonicon, which means you can only bring one person back. Mm -hmm. Right. One person. And so so Angie starts to really get on this kick that no nobody's actually dead. Yeah. That they're so, like, none of these people actually died. Just, like, sort of furthering, I guess, the whole escapism thing. It's this notion that... If we ignore the motive, then that might be bad because maybe they are alive, and if we ignore it, then they die. And and she's also like, if we bring someone back, then they can tell us that the other ones are alive somewhere, being held. Or there's a separate killing game going on that... Oh no. Between the people who have quote-unquote died, and by bringing them back via the Necronomicon, that person wins the other killing game, and now they're actually really dead for real this time. Wait, there, there's a bracket. loser's bracket for the killing game? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, losing in the killing game, you just go to killing game two, and then it's like killing game regionals. Hey, you don't want to die a second time. It's dying two times, and you are out. <laughs> <laughs> You're really dead this time. I would love Danganronpa regionals. <laughs> 
Oh, with some shout casting, that'd be great. That's our fan game. Thing in Rumble <laughs> Regionals. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, then, uh, there's, th- then also the, um, that rock, uh, that said horsey on it, um, has mm-hmm. more letters on it now, and, and they're like, well, maybe that rock with letters on it are the dead people trying to send us a message. Um, there's more writing on it. I, I think it seems like the first, like, three rows are, like, the world is, maybe? And then the other mm-hmm. ones I'm not sure because of how they're spaced and there's not very many letters. That's Could be kinda... Monokuma for the last line. Yeah. And, and uh, so with this, this whole group getting together, Angie declares that she is calling her group the Student Council. And uh, so the, the Student Council is um, under the command of Angie, and they're also the Satua cult. And uh, people continue to argue. Um, I also made a note that Kaito is suspiciously silent during this whole this whole thing, and uh, we'll find out why later, I guess. Um, so after, uh, so so the, uh, the stu- so they officially call themselves the student council, and now everybody's like, oh shit. This is and like the people that are not in the student council are like, this is a cult, you guys. A cult. This is what a cult is. <laughs> like, Kokiji knows what a cult is. Kyo knows what a cult is. Like all these people who like definitely know exactly how this whole thing works. I'm kind of surprised Kokiji is like, all right, I'll join you and then I'll become the, the leader because that's what I do. Yeah, right. I feel like Kokiji is nicer than he is. wants people to think that he is <laughs> in a weird way. Like he's he's always like he's always like actually kind of advocating for the group in in his weird his weird way. Um, this is a little bit of a tangent, uh, but it's about Kokichi. Um, has anyone else noticed uh, that the buttons on his shirt uh, match the colors for the Monokumas? Ooh. I have not. Yeah, noticed I feel that. like if anybody's the <laughs> if anybody's the mastermind, then it's him. <laughs> like. But it's like too obvious. But like I don't know, I like. Also, him. that room that has the 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 black and white checkered door that we still can't open. That's like obviously his ultimate lab. Like, okay, sure. I. Why does nobody say anything about this? It's like one of the most obvious labs, and nobody really cares. Yeah, no one gives a shit about that one. I don't know. I don't, like, and it's so obvious. Like, it's so obvious that it makes me be like, if he's just the leader of the ultimate hunt, what? <laughs> I don't know. Someone, many people listening to this are probably like, mm! so we should move on. Um, the man's fantasy time. The scene. If you if you have the man's fantasy, go to the pool. And you see the girls, and they got no shirts on, um, and you don't except their nipples are covered up by their hair or whatever. And it's just girls in the locker room talking about their boobs, you know, like you do. Just gals being pals. Just talking about boobs. Just comparing their boobs. <laughs> <laughs> but. I, in my notes, I wrote, "This is so much, and yet nothing at all." <laughs> uh, so that it was—I don't know. It was like, but it's completely it accurate, right? The recording. Yeah, it's like this game has a lot of like, I guess, like sexual content, but it's not like sexually charged. It just exists. A lot of the same, like, it's the same way that like there's a lot of like super violent content, but I don't feel anything when I see it. Like, and I don't feel, like, it's, it, I don't feel offended. I don't feel titillated. I just am like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, um, it's skippable because I had a crash happen around, not, like, right before this I had a crash happen. So, like, I kind of, but I hadn't saved right before the crash. So, like, I had to rush back to this stuff and I completely missed that, like, the whole thing. You, oh, you missed it? Yep. I got you covered, buddy. Don't no, worry. No, 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 no,
auto is really slow in this game if you put auto play on. He posted another consent picture. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. That's Chewy Chewy and Cookie. Yeah, I I thought, oops. Oh, my bad. Uh, How did all these Chewy 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 and Cookie Chewy images end up on my computer? What would you even call that? Chewy Chewy Cookie Chewy Chewy Well, they should go humming a humming Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay so then you have free time after that you can hang out with people and then it's night time and it's time for training again oh just important thing to note though that uh, from what i can tell you can't uh get friendship points with people at all. yeah so i i tried this i did two of so i started with um Samugi, I think before she... I did that too. Yep. Yeah. I think I did like I was able to get one with her before she actually joined the cult, and then I tried it twice with her uh, afterwards, and I could not get any points. So I said, "Fuck it," I went with uh, Maki. <laughs> Same with me. And uh, this is a good thing because when uh, when Slow Beef had told us all, "Oh, there's a bug in the game, so be sure to save before you start these things." Was that was that trying to get us? Because you knew that this could, stuff could happen when you waste a gift yeah so yeah. i exactly i actually i did it on some i tried to do free time with samugi i wasted the gift i hadn't saved i'd forgotten i also did not save so yeah, yeah I, 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 well, that's why i was like i warned you all but... see i didn't consider it a bug i thought it was just like part of the game like good I think job, it's, dumbass. yeah it's not a all right to be fair it's not a bug but it's just it's annoying because there's no explanation given it's just like okay i'll take the gift bye and you don't get the point or anything yep. mm. so, so the first yeah. time i was like oh, okay i guess she just didn't like it that well and i tried again i'm like okay well fuck you too <laughs> yeah. yeah i haven't run into that bug yet but i have run into situations where they just hated what i gave them like i that figured that me you would like tissues but she doesn't she gives them those out. She doesn't take them. Oh, uh, right, yeah, it's yeah. like reverse. Okay. <laughs> so, um, train. So, the after we hang out with all of our friends, uh, it's training time again, and uh, Maki shows up to train, even though Kaito is not here to train because he's not. Fe- he hasn't been feeling well. Kaito's been sick. Yeah, Kaito's been acting strange. He's been quiet and he's been kind of sweaty and looking like he doesn't feel yeah. well. He's, yeah, he looks like he's he's like has a fever or something. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, it's like, what do you even do if you get sick in this place? <laughs> well, you probably go to like Monokuma Hospital where he just like has big pills and needles and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And they're also in this like perfectly closed environment, so like maybe I don't know. Maybe they can't actually get sick. I don't know. So anyway, Kaito's not feel not feeling well for reasons. And so Maki and Shuichi train together instead, and they have, like, a moment um, together and talk about stuff. And uh, Maki's like, why do you even deal with that idiot? And Shuichi's like, you know, when I'm with Kaito, uh, all the things that I'm worried about just kind of fade away. (laughs) (laughs) It's really good. And um and and Mackie's like, oh okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> she says something like, oh this, this this manly stuff makes like makes me uncomfortable, or I'm so oh, sick right. of all this manly stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, um yeah, it's it's extremely good. And uh, they head back to their dorms, and the student council is waiting in the dormitory to bully Maki. Mm-hmm. And they say, because everyone's suspicious, uh, we don't want... because Oh, because um, the last murder happened at night, nobody's allowed to go outside at night, except, of course, the student council. We're fine, because obviously we can trust each other. But Maki, you super aren't allowed to be out at night by yourself. Especially you. Ever. Yeah. And she's like, I'm gonna do whatever I want, though. It's kind of like a messed up, like, the popular kids versus, like, the unpopular kid, where they're all, like, bullying them. Yeah. It's also weird to, like, bully Maki, because she's just gonna be like, are you, are you gonna try and stop me? Literally me, the ultimate assassin? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think Ma Maki's not in like intimidated by them, but she's like kind of disappointed, and then she's also like worried because like, oh, this is this is this tension that's gonna keep building, and what are we gonna do about it? Mm -hmm. And uh, so then they just sort of go to bed, and it's like, oh well, this is uh, this is happening, huh? They're they're making a move for power over uh, the other half of the kids, and uh, the next morning. Uh, everybody, they're not fighting, but like, that's what it's described. Uh, everybody's arguing in the, in the dining hall because the student council has covered the manhole that leads to the death road to despair. Because mm -hmm. nobody should want to leave anymore. Yeah. And before we get there though, if you meet Miko outside, she tells Shuiki, who I guess was not supposed to have been there when the confrontation happened. And, and, uh, Miko tells Shuichi about being oh, confronted. Maki. I mean, sorry, Maki. Fuck is sorry, Miko. Miko. Sorry. Uh, Maki. Hatsune Maki. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Miko. And... I'm the transfer student. <laughs> oh, no. And then if you run to, to Miyu on the way, um, she talks about being uh, working on the computer all night again. And she goes, if I keep doing this, I'm going to pull all my groin muscles. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I love it's pretty blatant. Shuichi is just like, how are you how are you using the computer? He has this internal <laughs> yeah. thing, like, of what we're all thinking. It's just like But that doesn't make sense. <laughs> how can you with that Xbox so big though? <laughs> yeah, that's why she likes it. <laughs> and we're not talking about the free time, but just as a quick one, uh for uh, I spent one of my free times with Miyu, and I gave her the gift of robot oil. <laughs> she seemed to like it, so that's that worked. <laughs> oh well. Oh boy. Well, I mean, you're committed to the ship. Yep. There you go. So let's see. They argue. The, so everybody's arguing, and the the mono cubs show up, and are and mono Dan's like, nobody fight. We don't want you to fight anymore. And uh, everyone has to get along. And right. um, in order to help everyone get along, they brought another flashback light. Mm -hmm. And Angie's like, no, nobody should want to leave. So Angie gets, grabs the light and destroys it. Yep. And Fucked up. they're True. like, the and this is a point where like, in good, I hope now. she dies. Yeah. That, yeah, that was like the point of like, that yeah, that was the far. final power move. And uh, Angie's like, the student council has decided that we're going to resurrect Rantaro uh, mm -hmm. because he knows the most about what's going on and he could tell us all the stuff that he knew because he would remember now. I thought it was also because he was innocent. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. He's, he's also innocent. the only Yeah, innocent. also, we're not going to resurrect Ryoma because he's a loser that doesn't want to, like, live. He doesn't want to live. Uh, oh, he broke the rules, too. He violated the rule about sharing the motive videos, which I don't remember that being a rule. I guess just they agreed to not do it. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't want to resurrect Kurumi because she's a killer. Why did Why did they not want to resurrect Kaede? She's a killer. She's murder. Oh, she is a killer. Yeah, but she's like a good killer. She wouldn't do it again. No, she definitely would not do it again. No, she would. If she thought someone was the mastermind, she totally would. Mm. It didn't take much to convince her. That's for sure. It was the time limit, though, that she was like, "Ah, oh, shit, I'm gonna have to kill someone. I only have an hour." You know, like. No, uh... And and so then you would expect during all of this arguing and this power grab, like, where's Kaito to, like, yell at everyone in a in a moralistic way? But he's still in the background, like, looking like he has a fever. So yeah. I think a lot of this power shift is also because Kaito is silent because he's, like, sick the oh, whole time. And there's one other thing that we haven't mentioned. They... I, I'm not sure if I've gotten this quite right, but they say they want to bring somebody back in the case that they have another time limit motive like before so that they could kill oh, yeah. them yeah yeah like to be a, a sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice yeah. Yeah. It, it gets dark real quick yeah <laughs> fucking student council <laughs> and they're just like well Rantaro was easy to kill first now they didn't say that <laughs> <but>. <laughs> like what <laughs> it's weird there's no way that should have killed him but somehow it did. yeah right <laughs> If he hadn't just stood there on the spot with his eyes bugging out of his head while a siren played. Um, I I got pretty mad at this because it's just like, none of, no one, like, we already mentioned this, no one really fights back, but no one, like, even tries to, like, c 
convince gullible Ganta, like, hey, there weren't any student council elections, don't you think that's fair? Like, that would be an easy argument to win. Yeah, I feel like it's because Kaito's sick, like, and he's not talking. Like, but if he... Because he would have said something and, like, kind of... Well, Shuichi still doesn't stand up to anybody. I mean, that's true. I, I'm actually a little surprised he didn't get convinced to join the cult. <laughs> what a nerd. Um, yeah, so I think I think because if I think if Kaito was not sick, and then he would have started yelling, and that would have given everyone else the momentum to start yelling back at them. But because he doesn't say anything, I think it's why they kind of get away with it, and everybody yeah. else just kind of backs off. At the point where they've got Gonta, they kind of are a threat now because they could just tell Gonta to just like put everybody in a headlock or something. And uh, yeah, so the next thing. Um, is Tenko, I think, approaches time. us. Oh, free time, yeah. Yeah, it's free time. Um, we go to train with Kaito. And Kaito, we go with Maki to Kaito's room, and uh, Kaito says, I, don't, I still don't want to train because I'm still not feeling well. I can't eat, I can't sleep. Um, and Shuichi's kind of like, you just do whatever you need to, need to do, which, if he was really sick, I feel like would be really ominous. Like, um, at this point, before I, like, I knew what was going on, like, I was like, is he being poisoned? Like, yeah, that's what? what I thought, too. I put yeah. that in my notes, the same same reaction. I'm like, oh, this is going to be one of those long kills. Yeah. So, and, and so then it also brings up the question of, like, how how is, how can somebody die from getting a cold? Like, surely not. Like, surely they would be... Yeah, they would imagine if you just, die. like, you sneezed on someone and they've got, like, a really weak immune system and they just die from that. Would you be the killer? <laughs> or... Yeah, like, what? Or just from the environment, you know? Anyway, um, so, yeah, they go out... So, uh, Shuichi and Maki go out to train and Tenko appears and she finally admits, uh, cause they're like, why are you even doing this? And she's like, oh, I'm not. I'm not brainwashed. I want you to help me stop the resurrection yeah. ritual. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, there you go, Tenko. But then she says some fucking shit like she always does about like, men are this way and women are this way and fuck off. God, mm -hmm. Tenko. I'm tired of your shit. You say men walk like this. <laughs> God, Tenko's over here with the bio truths. <laughs> um... Men debate in the killing game like this, but women debate in the killing game like this. That's Tenko, though. God, it's the worst. So uh, they all go to Angie's room, and she's like, I want you to help me convince Angie not to do the resurrection ritual. Mm -hmm. And uh, But, but um, they knock on the door, but she doesn't answer until Tenko says, like, hey, it's me, because she will only answer for members of the student council. And right. they go to, so then she lets them in, and they're like, we want to talk to you. And they go in the room where she has made wax sculptures of all four of the deceased people. And they are very lifelike. They are just the art with a little bit alteration. It's, yeah, it's the art of the characters, like but it. they're not like cardboard cutouts. And also they look a little more real, I think. Yeah, there's no black out, there's no black outline. I found it kind of creepy. It's super yeah, creepy. It's really creepy. Yeah. The art's really well done in this, I thought, for that. Oh, you can thank so, Atua for that. That's true. Thank you, Atua. Praise be. Um, so they can't, they, they try to say, look, Angie, like, don't do this. This is weird. And of course, they can't persuade her because she's like, well, Atua says that this is what I need to do. And Angie just, I think at some point they describe Angie as like, Angie just does whatever she wants because she, everything is what Atua wants. So she has no, she has no moral compass <laughs> except for what she wants to do right now. Yeah. And they like to convince her that everyone actually did die. That this is absolute, like, this isn't, you not revealing these people like your first theory was. These people actually did die. And she's like, oh, then I guess this must be, then resurrection's real. So I'm just going to do that because Atua wants the resurrection to happen. Yeah, she just says whatever. She, it's very clear, and also we got this from, like, when we interacted with Angie in the first flashback light that we found. Or she just she just says whatever. Like, it's, uh, it's just, it's whatever she wants, and she does not budge on whatever she wants because it's what Atua wants. So, and they, and so they can't persuade her, so they just leave. And I feel like you could stop this from happening without killing Angie, but without just leaving her, it's just like, nobody I, it, wants it's to like be. It's like nobody's gonna like t 
tie her up or like you know lock her, you know some, something like that like like restrain her and be like no we're not letting you do this it's the same kind of problem with like himiko where it's like oh it's it's not a trick it's magic it's not a trick it's magic it's like nobody wants to be forceful with anybody where it's like oh, once once you please don't do the resurrection no i'm gonna do it well we tried and it's like as soon as you walk out the door you know you're like oh she's gonna die like as soon as you walk out that door you're like she is gonna be dead in the morning there's like it's it's telling her. and it's not like tenko and maki together in that room could not easily restrain angie in some sort of permanent way where they would be like no you're not doing this and we're gonna sit here until everybody comes in and talks about or it or they could just like bust the shit out of her wax models you know yeah Take the Necronomicon away. Yeah, take that away. But I then, they don't. I don't know, maybe that creates a motive? Are, are, petty, are petty grievances enough for it to be a motive? Yeah, I guess everybody's so afraid of Probably things Andy. escalating to murder that they don't want to have any kind of confrontation. Yeah, that's Especially when it's like, hey, we're clearly div divided six on one side and six on the other, and this is going to be a thing. You know, this is like, we don't want to start a war between two two different factions. Yeah, but the consequences are so grave. I don't know. It's it's still, it's still strange. I'm sorry, did you say um, six on one side, six on the other? Time for a split opinion. Whoa! Dun, 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 dun. So when they leave, uh, Himiko's there in the hallway and is like, Oh, Tanko, what are you doing here? And Angie's like, oh, Himiko, Tenko just betrayed the student council. <laughs> and uh, Himiko's like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> and Tenko gets mad at Himiko and is like, aren't you angry at me? Why don't you express any emotion? Like, you know, she's like, just feel something. Just feel something at me. Because she, and, and I thought that was actually kind of a good moment. Because mm -hmm. she's like, even if you're mad, like, feel anything because you're retreating so far away right. from everyone so you don't have to deal with this and you have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really good section for Tanko and but Kimiko still the same character that I guess uh, it's just setting up for some future episode. Yeah, and, uh, and so after this whole uh, argument uh, issue... Uh, Maki is like, I'm gonna help, uh, I'm gonna help y'all get Angie to stop the ritual. Like, Maki's like, I'm on your team. <laughs> and then they go to bed. And I think Kai, uh, Suichi says something like, we're gonna have to try, like, you know, unconventional means. And Maki's like, I gotcha. Yeah. Conventional. Oh, right, yeah. So now they're like, oh, maybe we'll do something to her, but not murder, but just, yeah, again, like tying her up or locking her in a room or something. Something besides asking nicely. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, the, there's a Monodam theater when you go to sleep that night, and Monodam has a whole story about how he won't forgive bullying because in the past life he was a fish boy who was bullied in school for being a fish. For fish flopping on his desk. I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> you know, I I also want to say one thing I really did love, by the way, during the Monocup Theater, which I don't think we covered, is whenever when Monofini pukes, it's different colors, oh, and yeah. they're like, oh, wow, you saw Monofini blue puke, that's a sign of good luck, and I really like that for some reason. But anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's, it's weird. It's just, everything they do is weird. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, oh, they, that's it. They say anyone who sees Monofini's blue puke will have good luck. <laughs> like, it's a fortune or something yeah. that everyone they knows. They should replace fortune cookies with that, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I've been ready to do this one. Oh, oh like that's not good. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, so the next morning, uh, we, they, we go to Kaito's room. Um, I think, or he comes to our room. One of those things. Yeah, I think. He, um, uh, uh, Kaito and and uh, <laughs> and Maggie show up, and and they ring your doorbell right in the morning. Oh right, yeah, yeah. And Kaito finally admits that he has been quote unquote sick because he was scared because ghosts and stuff are really scary to him, 
And mm. apparently Kaito Momota is allergic to being scared. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kaido. So good. Yeah, it was at that moment that it's like, oh, thank God he's not poisoned. But Kaido, you're a fucking idiot. He doesn't want anyone to be resurrected. He's like, so, he's so afraid of anything ghost stories. Like, he's not afraid of murder. And like, even Maki is like, all this fucked up shit is happening all around us, and you're afraid of ghosts. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Oh, what a nerd. So, next morning, first thing, go back to Angie's lab, talk to her again. And Himiko is there outside the door, and she's like, Angie won't come out of her lab. And they're, like, banging on the door, like, let me in, let me in, Angie, we need to talk. Don't, like, they think, like, she's doing the ritual right now, and she's not right. gonna stop for them. Um, and as they're banging on the door, Kokichi appears! Yay! And he's like, hey, remember, I can pick locks, because I'm a little shit. <laughs> and um, and everyone's like, oh, right, we forgot. And they tell Kokichi to pick the lock. And he's like, no problem. And he does. And uh, we open the door. And what do we see in the room? Nothing. Everything's fine. Yeah. It's, it's Angie. Chill. She says, She's hey. doing a little <laughs> Can I She's like, oh, yeah, I'm working at work always right now. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Tua, no. Tua. All right. So Angie is dead. Uh, she's laying on the ground, and the four wax statues are hung upside down, and the, there's a gold katana uh, from Kyo's lab that is stuck in Kaede, the Kaede's statue. Um, did we cover the fact that the... Did we cover anything about the katana, come to think of it? Oh, no, no, no. Really no. Oh, yeah. lab. Should... It has gold leaf on it, and the gold leaf comes off. Really easy yeah, supposedly, hands. like, the gold leaf on it is a way to tell that it's authentic or that it's really old or something. Right. This is a bit of a nod back to Dang. Oh, I, I don't know. It's it's a nod to Dang and Rumble 1. Uh, that's all I'll say. Okay. That's um, all you but... need to know about the sword. If you touch yeah. it, you'll get gold on your hands. Right. Yeah, and it's not actually sharp. It's just but you could kill someone with it. The, the blade isn't has a great edge, but you yeah. stab them. It couldn't cut, but it can stab. Investigation start. Exactly. Um, uh, All right. So there is. We got so much left to go. Oh my god, this is gonna be oh, two yeah. hours. We don't have. To, we actually, if you don't, well. Well, oh, but do yeah, we want to just this, fast this track? Part does. Do we want to just fast well, track I mean, the clues? Yeah, it's just because yeah, I mean, it's, I there's, it's there's a lot bad. of like interaction. Yeah. Just, it just there's a shit ton of clues. Yeah. Maki's so, helping us during the investigation this time. Yeah, it's like she's, she's totally about murder. Yeah, it's like a, really... it's like a good dynamic because she, we're still kind of queasy around bodies, but she's really comfortable with it. And Shuichi right. picks up on like detective stuff that Maki wouldn't pick up on. Yeah, but she still like notices things, and she's like, "Why didn't you notice this? I thought you were a detective." <laughs> yeah. The, the Monokuma file says that Angie was stabbed in the back of the neck, and that's what killed her. But she also had, I believe, um, a some laceration kind of, on her forehead. Laceration, thank yep. you. Yes, yep, on her forehead. Uh, there is gold leaf on the back door lock, the latch or the you know sliding lock, uh, the bathroom style lock. You know, there's the yep. gold leaf on that. Um, is there anything else in Angie's? Uh, the sword that has been stabbed into the Kaede statue, they remove it to investigate it. There's blood on the tip that was hidden by the statue. That's right. There's also so a large the pool... Weapon. There's also a large pool of blood underneath... Um, Angie? Angie. Angie. And they, they find a piece of tape. They find yeah. a piece yep. of tape under her body with some of her hair on it I, for some I reason. I was stuck investigating this room forever to find this fucking yeah. piece of hair. Like, if I want to look at... Well... Not the hair, but if I want to look at the body and there's a huge pool of blood next to it, just I assume that I want to look at the blood too. Yeah, it they really don't telegraph these real well. Yeah, especially in a, in a game where you really can't explore too well. Like you, your perspective is really limited, and it's not. It just it just feels like you have to scroll. So we just be like, I'm just gonna wave my thing cursor over here till it pops. So you can use the investigation view to make it a little bit easier, right? But the mm -hmm. the red. Or, or, sorry, not red. The pink blood uh, being a part of the body, but two distinct entities that you have to select was a bit annoying, so... Yeah. 
they oh they also uh, look at in uh, the Necronomicon. Which yep. Is oh there. yeah, it's you Next open it up and body. it's like a it's like a little picture book of how to do it and yeah, the and ritual. So you have to burn the book. Yeah, well, the... its ashes on an effigy of the person to resurrect them. Right. They kind of go, um, you know, it, make an effigy of the person you want to resurrect. If it, if you can't tell, you know, from the outset of it, uh, from the outset, what it, who it's supposed to be, like just put a little label on it. It's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, burn right. the book. It's, sprinkle the ashes on the book. Anyways, don't worry yeah. about it. Sprinkle the ashes on the book. Be careful of carbon monoxide poisoning. And uh, shut your eyes and whisper the name of the person you want to resurrect three times. If it's successful, you will feel a tap on your shoulder. <laughs> but also, like, so in the when they're first investigating, somebody, I forget who it was, it mentions that, oh, but what if she completed the ritual and one of those people actually got resurrected and killed her? But then I don't know if they mention that, that because the Necromonicon is still there, that it, it, it didn't happen. Yeah, because you would have to use the Necromonicon. Right, I think like, we can assume that, but I don't know if they... Did they actually say that? It seemed weird to me that they have omitted it when they found... Like, like, oh, they don't say that. Yeah. They do not... Yeah, they do not make mention of that. Um, so, I think at this point, is this where Kia, once you've investigated everything, is kind of like, I have an idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember that seance? Kia jumps I've been on this. Watching? He he's, is, like, he's like, please, please, please let me do the seance. Y'all have been saying no this whole time, but please let me do the seance. He's I don't thirsty do much. as hell for this one. I don't do much with my life. I'm the ultimate anthropologist, for God's sake. Just let me have this. Let me do this. This is the one thing I know how to do, you guys. And he's like, we're gonna, we're gonna have a seance. We'll contact Angie, ask who killed her. One and done. And I gotta say, not a bad plan if you believe in seances. So, um... We go to the middle room of the three, like, empty rooms I mentioned before. Yeah, because right? the room has to be pitch and, black. Like, absolutely black. Yes, that's right. Also, and it is Himiko's suggestion to go to the middle room. That's right. She it is. Order. Yep, she is. That's right. You're absolutely right. She says, let's, let's choose the middle room. And then we go in. And, uh, what does he do? Kyo sets up a circle of salt, an intricate sort of symbol. It's, just, it's a whole thing. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. it's Please really don't elaborate. disturb the salt. Do the right. next step, also, but first, please don't disturb the salt. At first, right. Shuichi is not involved. If they leave oh, before, yeah, this is he's great. Not investigating. Yeah, yeah and they so. They take Kibo with them instead. It's Kibo, Kyo, Himiko, Tenko, and Kokichi. Right. It's like and they. And then when Shuichi shows up. They, they pick yes. Kibo, but like they kind of coerce him into doing it, but then they're also like. I mean, I guess he's good enough to do a seance. It's like. <laughs> They're forcing him, but he's also a burden. Yeah, and uh, and then when Shuichi, uh, so then Shuichi and Maki go and like investigate in the Ultimate Anthropologist Lab just to confirm like that's the sword, and they read about the cage dog or the cage child seance. And uh, mm -hmm. Kokichi's in there, and he's like, "Hey, you guys are about to start. Like, hey, Shuichi, why don't you watch since you're investigating? Like, just do that." And he's like, "Okay." And he goes in and Kyo's like, we can only have five people. We can't have an extra person in here. So, mm. Kibo, you leave. Yeah, now that we have an actual person, why don't we just go away? Everybody right. bullies Kibo so much. Anyway, Kibo gets really mad. He's like, mm. uh, you you all, I'm mad at you. <laughs> Y'all are jerks. Does he he'll get retribution? <laughs> no, he blames he Shuichi. He's like, he's like, I won't forget this, Shuichi. Yeah. 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 Sweetie's like, yeah, I didn't like even a... do anything. Fucking <laughs> okay, Shadow of Mordor, Kibo, Kibo will not forget this. <laughs> Kibo will I'll be back, Shuichi. <laughs> Alright, so we're, we're gonna do the cage dog ritual, which requires someone to go into the center of the salt circle and kind of scrunch up with their head down, like a, I guess, like, kind of... Like a know, turtle. Like a turtle. Like a turtle, yeah. yeah. That's right. Rest their they head on a rock. That's right, a marker stone. Tenko volunteers for this. She puts well, at her first head... Himiko's gonna do it, and then Tenko's like, no, I'll do it so that you can talk to Angie. That's right, that's right. Which is like, I guess supposed to be like a little like, aww, kind of thing. Um, so Tenko puts her head on the marker stone, she scrunches up like a turtle. Shuichi and Kokichi bring a, bring a big round, like, grated cage? Is grated the right word? It's like, yeah. kind of like... The... Yeah, steel yeah. It's like a laundry basket, but made out of iron. Yeah, um, and it's completely, like, round and stuff. 
but and like, they uh, make note of it being they, super heavy. Yeah, so they lift it on. Kyo comes over, covers it with a white sheet, and then asks uh, someone to pull to put a dog statue on. I forget who brings it. I think all maybe four of them. Yeah, because it of them. weighs 175 pounds. Yep. Yeah. So they place it on top of Tenko. I think this is probably we're all thinking the same thing when this happened. Yep. Yeah. Did so, fucking die? Did we yeah. mention yeah. the sheet? Yeah. We did mention the sheet. Okay. Yeah, I did. So uh, everyone goes to their corners of the room. Four, the other four go to each corner of the room. Shuichi and Kikichi blow out the candle. Mm-hmm. So in pitch darkness, they sing the cage dog song. Uh, oh, and before is... we get the before they sing, uh, uh, Kyo uh, tells uh, uh, Tenko that, that she can't, can't she can't talk, and she says, "Okay, now on, uh, won't talk anymore." And like so, so she's in there, she's under these things, everybody's in the corners, and she has acknowledged that she won't talk. And then the seance begins. She actually does say something right. pretty nice to uh, to Himiko, which is the next time I talk. It'll be Angie speaking through me, and she does. I forget the exact words, but she uh, she basically does some reassurance to Himiko, which I thought mm-hmm. was real nice. It's like another yeah. kind of plea that Himiko doesn't have to be like withdrawn all the time. She can be angry or laugh or. Oh yeah, she's like it's stuff. okay to be angry or cry or you know just you know however you feel when you see. Uh, it's like e- it's like Angie, let Ten- it all out. It's like even Tenko thought it was predictable and it was like, yeah. I better get my last words out. <laughs> well, I feel like Tenko also like if this is all on the up and up when we actually go through the trial, like, and she doesn't know what's going on, um, that she is sort of preparing to lie to Himiko and pretend that she's Angie because she doesn't believe in it and be like, no, everything's okay and you should feel your emotions more. By, by the way, the killer, my killer was not Tenko. Yeah, right? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> that would so, actually... Uh, as they I, sing the I song... I feel like she was, she was channeling Kaito a little bit when she was like, uh, yeah. alright, feel, feel some emotions, be, be good. I like that we kind of went from, you know, you can... Her pretending to be Angie and be like, you can, you know, show your emotions, but you know it would just devolve into... You know, Tenko is really nice. Like, Tenko was saying some really nice things to me about you, and Tenko really likes yeah. you. So, if you ever see her, I don't I don't know where she is, but maybe if you see her again, maybe uh, you can just, like, be nice to her and go out with her, right? I mean, I'm dead. And he'll be like, all right, knock it off. Oh, yeah. right? I don't know. It's <laughs> ridiculous. But... Unfortunately, that none of these comedic situations happen because during the Cage Dog song, which everybody's singing in total darkness, there's a loud crash sound, I think. Like a big thunk. Right. And then nobody's speaking, and then... They're still they're like, singing. Happen- oh, no. I mean, at the end, though, that once it stopped, like, Tenko's not speaking to Angie or anything. So Kyo's like, what the hell happened? Something went wrong here? And uh, they put the lights on. I kind of forget how. I think just keep. They have, so, they have matches. They have matches. Okay. They have matches. Right. Right. Yeah. Kokichi so then and they... Shuichi both have to turn it on. Yeah. And then they That's have right. to remove the items in the order they were placed by the same people who placed them. So that takes That's right. a bit of time. Yeah. Although it doesn't actually happen because at the end, once they actually get the sheet off, that's when Himiko sh- sees that, you know, oh boy, Hanko's been stabbed. There's blood. Yeah, and so runs over runs, and yeah. oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> so Tinko is now dead, also, and and Himiko messed it up. She ran over and, yeah. like, in a fit of of grief, like lifts by herself the whole cage off of her, and uh, so Himiko has messed up the ritual, and right. so um, and I think Kyo even said like. If you mess up the ritual, then, then like the spirit you're trying to contact can like take revenge or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he's like really, like, all about this salt circle and how you shouldn't disturb it. And even when Tenko's there dead, he complains to Himiko. Is like you disturb the salt circle. It's like shut up, Kyo. Well, and, and he also keeps but saying he's like legitimately, I... I think, afraid that something will happen, like if they don't do it right. 
and he also doesn't understand why it didn't work. Like, even after they find her dead body, he's like, I don't understand why this didn't work. He's like, well, because she's well, dead. Because I mean, it's that, not real. That, 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 that may be the whole problem. Yeah, he's he's most he's the most upset that the ritual didn't go correctly. Um, and, uh, and then the monocubs show up. Mm. And they're like, somebody died. And they're like, what? Wait, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> How? Do we start another investigation? What? Do the rules... Do the rules cover this? What exactly? And all the kids are like, wait, you don't know? Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll get back to you on that one. And uh, finally, they say, no, dad, we need your help. Please come back to us. And, <laughs> because uh, we Monokuma, love you. Yeah, Monokuma's like, bald, messed up body is there but then another Monokuma shows up and is like, hey, it's me, Monokuma I'm back, that was a really relaxing vacation mm -hmm. so, uh, and I think Monokuma explains that basically, if there's two murders, the second one doesn't even count yeah, Toward the it's killing uh, game. if two people if one person murdered you, two people you don't have to repeat what I just said in more detail though, well it helps. Well, like, you gotta say it correctly. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm yeah. Just using you. Yeah. Basically, there's no a waste point. of a murder Everybody and a waste of a victim. Or else. Right. <laughs> I'll punish myself later. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, God oh. damn. So, oh. uh, so yeah. So Tanka was killed, and no one, nothing's gonna happen. Hmm. I mean, something's gonna happen, just not because of her. Right. Although, so, the, the, the language is a little obscure here, so that's why I'm like, I don't know the exact details, but I remember being like, but they're not, they're, they're saying that if it's not the same Oh person, yeah, if it's a different person, yeah, that that's what matter. I mean. Yeah. But, like, yeah. It also, like, it still doesn't matter because if it's the same person, you're you're just voting for the who the first one was. The, the, what they're getting at is the trial of this chapter is going to be about Angie's murder. Right. No matter what happens, it doesn't matter who killed Tenko. They, they like so. Basically, I think they even make a comment like, "Hey, murderer," or something like. If you were hoping that you were going to get out of here by tricking people with Tenko, this is just a waste. Or I forget how they'd say that. Yeah, but, the, like, there won't be two black, and there will only be one black, and then that, yeah. and it will be for the murder. They don't address one specific theory though that makes the most sense, and they don't even bring up. Which is, what if Tenko was the original murder? I guess we'll find out. Mm -hmm. But they don't address it. They, like, they, and it could be like an obvious possibility. They don't even talk. It kind of got me to thinking where, I mean, this really seems like a worst case scenario. Where you have two different murders from two different people. And only the first one matters. So, after that, you basically have a murderer amongst you. Yeah, you just have like... Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. Now, you know what? I I mean, I feel like um, this is just not good. Like, I, I feel like, fuck it, we're going to have two trials in one. If the first person gets away with it first, then that person gets to leave. But if you get that first person, fine. But we move immediately to the second. You know what I mean? I feel like that would have been better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why not? I don't... Yes, we'll find out during the trial. Well, I'm... You know, Oh uh, yeah, but you forgot about the third victim. Right. My favorite. Because, well, also, yeah. Tenko was murdered by being stabbed in the back of the neck the same way that Angie was murdered. Um, and it is meant to imply that because the ritual was messed up, uh, she was killed the same way as Angie was killed. But like, that's the effect of messing up the ritual. Right. And I think they even... Shuichi and Maki. So then this devolves into an investigation of how Tenko died, even though it doesn't count. It doesn't count. And so it really like takes up this huge amount of time that they could have all been looking into what happened to Angie. Um, so there's not there's not alibis, there's not all that stuff they're gonna have to talk about during the actual trial. Right. Um and so uh but they go and and uh and it looks like because there's blood on the cage and on the white cloth that she died as the cage was lifted which again is like oh if the ritual's messed up then that's when the person dies that's inside or, um, so it's all spooky so uh, there's a, there's some kind of like 
broken wood in the back of the room, meaning that, like, there seems to be a gap in the corner that you could drop something and it would fall through the floor, if that makes sense. Um, they also noticed that under Tenko's body, there's, like, it looks like a floorboard's moved. Like, there's, like, a gap there. So, I think they use... Do they use that to get under the floor? Yeah, there's a space underneath the floor. There's, yeah. like, a like a crawl space under all three of the rooms. That's, yeah. like, three, three feet of space. Like, it's a... Uh, I don't know, Japanese style house <laughs> type thing where there's like this big crawl space underneath. Right. Um, they do note that like one of the cross beams of the floor is cut. They do notice that there is blood from Tenko that's dripping through the floorboards onto the ground under them. But they also notice there's a pool, there's like a pool or an am some amount or puddle or something of dried blood away from Tenko's body. And they notice a sickle in the corner. Yeah, with blood on it. So that's blood another on. weapon. Right. Yep. They make note that okay. it's possible that somebody could have concealed the, this weapon on themselves. Right. It's like not a. It's not a scythe. It's like a little hand sickle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, there's it's... also holes where you could you could go down on in one of the other the other two rooms and like mm -hmm. move over and then come up through the center room. Right. There's like a rotted, like a rotted divider between these that could be me go back right so they get up they realize we're running out of time so we really have to concentrate on angie i don't think i forgot any clues but we could also cover that during the trial section if yeah. we want and they open the door and fucking kokichi is lying on the ground with fucking blood on his head and they do the staticky like you found a body kind of thing and play the music and I'm, and this totally got me, and I'm like, holy shit, three of them? Yeah, I and literally I just, I literally said, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And then the cookie, she gets up and goes, it's a lie! God. Which is what a little awesome. Kid. So he's bloody, and basically he says he was in one of the, I think the rightmost room, and he like tripped, like a floor, like he tripped on a floorboard, like it kind of gave out under him. Yeah, yeah he, he's says like he fell through the floorboards and hit mm. his head and he's now he's bleeding and he's bleeding a lot yeah 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 so um and then i think pretty much trial starts right i don't think there's yeah. anything because then yeah. mom's like you're out of time and they're like shit we're gonna have to figure out angie's thing in trial yeah, um, and, and Kokichi's like staggering around because he's lost so much blood, and we're just cool with this. This is just he's just gonna go to the trial with a bunch of blood loss. Yeah, and Maki's the best. She's like, well, at least tell us what happened before you pass out. <laughs> yeah, I love Maki. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, and I, I like I like her like whole like thing with Shuichi when they're investigating and everything. But uh, so oh, also the scythe is from Maki's lab, and if you look on the map oh, yeah. when you go to the trial. The room directly underneath those three seance rooms is Maki's lab. Oh, hey now. So, um, did anybody expect there to be more than one murder this chapter? No, of course no. not. No. Well, I mean, not until we were actually, like, in the middle of the seance. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the seance is pretty much a tell, yeah. Nope. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story, uh, kind of, it's not really that funny. You know, I'm like one ahead. So I read through the seance at the two murders, and I was really planning on telling everybody read until the seance to cover the second murder and not mention the investigation or anything. And then fucking, like, I was playing the night before we were going to record and stuff, and fucking Kokichi got me, and I'm you, like, oh my yeah. god, what am I going to tell them now? So then I was like, I was like, that's why I was in the investigation, because I wanted to just get all three. But I was so happy with that. That was really it was good. Surprise. Like, yeah, yep. it was a good prank they pulled on this. Okay, so do we want to? I love him. Do we want to do crafts? theories? Yes. Okay. Definitely. I'm gonna. T All right. Here's my theory. Oh. And I'll tell you the problem with it. <clears throat> Wait, you have a theory? Didn't you read this? I had. A th I, wrote, I told you I wrote down theories. Oh, gotcha. This is what I theorized. Okay, this is my possible theory. Angie brought back Kaida. Killed her. Lox pretends to be killed so that when you come in, the body discovery uh, announcement comes in. Kills Tenko, comes back, and then is pretending to be dead the whole time. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, though, the mono fi Monokuma File 3 kind of violates that because it says that Angie's dead because of a wound to the neck. So 
Never mind me. Um, I was a little worried kind of about the resurrection thing playing into it because I was like, that... I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want that to be part of the murder mystery or the whatever, but that's... the book wasn't burned, so no one was I didn't... resurrected. To yeah. be honest with you, I didn't make that connection at that time. Right. When I made that theory, so... Anyway, that was my theory, but it's a very bad one, so... <laughs> Let me tell you what I want what I want to happen, even though it's okay. obviously wrong. What I want to have happened is for Tanko to have killed Angie, and then for Angie's ghost to have killed Tanko through the seance. <laughs> <laughs> and, but then, because it's Himiko who interrupted the seance, the blame could be put on her as the murderer uh of Tanko. You know, it's funny, though. I had I actually did have an alternate theory you reminded me of. Because I felt like Tenko's murder might have been set up in advance somehow. Mm -hmm. Meaning, well, maybe... Well, because someone had to saw that, or break that wood. That didn't just happen. Somebody right. had to be ready. Somebody had to know that we, they had to get them to the center room to do a seance. So my, my thinking was somehow Angie had set it up in advance, got murdered, but then her trap sprung to kill Tenko. Yeah. But I but don't then, know how any of that then, would work. But then Keo would have had to have been like complicit, um, or like, are they? They just he just wants to do that seance so bad. They're like, <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, I guess my point is just that like, uh, that's a theory I liked too. Yeah, but you're right because then the seance would have to be in that room or on that. Spot but Himigo right. says like, let's do it in the center room specifically. And keep in mind too, the cage rich dog ritual is in that book. Yes. And Angie had a laceration on her head, and Kokichi bumped his head, falling through the floor. So Angie could have been the one that set up that murder situation underneath the, that mm -hmm. room, that center room. And that's mm -hmm. why she uh, had a laceration on her head. Other theories? So my theory is that, I don't know if we addressed this, but Kibo has a, uh, a, a light function. He can see basically in the dark oh, now. Right. Yeah, All right, yeah. So, guys. my theory yep. is Kibo killed Angie. Uh, I, I don't have too much in regards of how he did the locked room, except... Oh, I know how that happened. But... Um, this is my... Wait, I gotta, I gotta let me tell you. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm bolstering your theory. Um, how they got out of the room was that they stabbed the sword in Kaede, um, and then started, like, like wiggled the her hanging wax sculpture so it was so it was rotating and then uh ju and then um just as it, it basically set it up so that it would swing back and the sword that was stuck out would hit the lock and push it into place okay. and that's supported by the gold leaf that's on the lock mm -hmm. okay i like it um so my my support for kibo during the second murder was that he already knew about the entire ritual uh Perkyo says that he explained it to everyone beforehand, uh, before uh, Shuichi shows up and replaces Kibo. So, hypothetically, Kibo knows that everyone's going to be facing a wall, uh, Tanko's going to be not paying attention, and that there's going to be, uh, well, he doesn't know that there, there's a floor bird loose, but presumably he set that up or saw it beforehand. Maybe Angie told him. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, so... Uh, Kibo goes into the room over, goes under the floor, um, and then uses his light function to go underneath, reach under, and stab, uh, Tanko in the head. My, uh, my only thing is I thought that possibility too, but then wouldn't people have seen in the dark room his light function beneath the floorboards? Well, don't they have, like, their eyes closed or something? No, the floorboards fit together, but there is still the hole in the corner. I think okay. any light underneath the floor was going to shine back up. Mm -hmm. Well, but they're at, le uh, at least a, at least a hint. They're in the corner, yeah. and I could like maybe Angie or sorry, not Angie, Tanko saw it, and you know just thought, okay, I guess this is part of the ritual, and I can't say anything, anyways. Uh, I don't know, but I'm not. I, I mean, de I definitely could be wrong. Not to say that, but it's definitely possible. I wonder who of our remaining cast, though, like, and the thing is that Angie and Tenka was both, like, both of these people are definitely capable of killing someone right now. 
Um, I don't know how many people are left that I'm like, oh yeah, they could totally kill someone. Oh, I forgot my my last part of the theory uh, of for why Kibo did it. Um, he thought he could use the resurrection book to make him become a real boy. <laughs> <gasps> That's a good motive, yeah. So he didn't want Angie to use it to to become a. So that he could use it and then maybe take us all or something. I don't know. So this isn't really a solid theory, but it's kind of a connection that I think might be there. Uh, they make a note that hanging the statues upside down uh, would take a lot of work and they can't figure out why. And I noticed that the four figure statues kind of are similar to the four corners in the ritual. Uh, so somebody could, if they wanted to, put the, the figures in the corners and then use that as kind of like a training to be able to do it underneath in the real room where, you, where they can't see ah. anything. And they'd have to be hung up because while they were doing it, if they bumped into them, then they would fall over. So assuming that the setup in the art room is the same like kind of dimensions and same kind of area as the seance then they could have used that to kind of just feel out where underneath the floor they would have to be to pull off the kill. Yeah, they are really similar. Weird. So, my theory is that uh, Tenko is the killer of Andy. Uh, in the initial investigation, because he is always the one who is checking stuff out, Kuhichi figures out what's going on or at least it, it preps the scene, or it takes a look at the scene. Maybe Angie's prepped, maybe not. But he, he figures out that, that something could happen in that center, specifically around the sands. Uh, once that starts, he sneaks under through the hole in the corner, which he can easily get to. Displaces the floorboard, reaches up with the sickle because it's hooked. You can stay up in the back of the neck, so it looks like something above her when they killed her. And then. What happens is, because he can't see, he's doing this all in the dark just because he's investigated this and doesn't have memory, bumps his head, and knows he has left some blood down. In order to cover up the wound, which may come out in the trial, he then fakes his, the, the falling down in the third room and cuts himself again. Maybe the first time wasn't as serious, but this time he makes it very bloody, so that way there's no way anyone will ever be able to tell this was bleeding earlier on and i think he's good and now here's just from a game perspective i think he's gonna get away with i think the black end in the trial is gonna end up being tenko who's already dead mm -hmm. and since he had the free one he's going to remain an active participant but people know he killed oh mm -hmm. but what if he killed angie because she was her power was getting too out of control and he is the the um you know, supreme Ultimate leader and leader. everything. He knows about cults. He can pick locks. That's he true. was conveniently there already when they were trying to open the door. But I like your your swinging uh, Kato statue theory better. But he could have done works. that, though. He could have picked the lock to enter, gotten inside, locked it. He even comes from that direction. He comes from the direction of the other door. Yeah. Like, let he me... had just escaped through the other door. Let me throw this question out there. What's the point of locking the door? Oh, because you want the, as much confusion as possible so you can get away with the truck. But, like, what does it do? It, like, kind of just... I guess it... Mm, it if makes it look like maybe she was killed, like, in a... In, like, a spooky way? I don't know. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I, I, I mean, I think it's the game's way of making, obviously, like, a locked room mystery. It's just that, like, that's the kind of big thing I was having in my, like, theory crafting was, like, I, I couldn't think of a great reason why you would want to like have a locked door and like because you know angie's de you know it only would make sense to me if angie weren't really dead because then it's like somebody killed but she's the only you know what i mean like that's the only way it would work i would think but i don't know i just can't think of any real good reason for it if angie's dead and there's an unlocked door and there's uh -huh. an open door that means that somebody went in there so it's either a student council member or only mm -hmm. like that's pretty much it. Yeah, she would let it. So right. that narrows the suspect. With locked doors, it's anyone. 
Mm. And also, Good I mean, point. they have very specifically a limited amount of time to investigate, so it does make sense that the more confusion you could cause to delay the investigation, the more likely you are to get away with it. But you know what the tricky thing about that is? Is the lock, double locked door also delays finding the body and starting the investigation. But it gives you that gives you more time to get away and get an alibi or, or be somewhere else okay. when the body's discovered. That's fair. Okay. All right. Is there anything else before we uh, before we get our next reading assignment? If it is Kokichi, I'm glad that I maxed out my friendship with him before this <laughs> trial. Um. All right. Uh, what do you call it? And I didn't get to say the thing about well, the nicknames. Oh, that's later, I guess. Right? Or is that no, no, we, we had it. Yeah. We we had oh. the Maki roll so, yeah. when they first show up. Yeah. I might have run in the bathroom. Did I tell you what her what the nickname is in Japanese? No. No. So Maki's name, full name, of course, last name first was Haru Harukawa Maki, which Kaido shortens to Haru Maki. Haru means spring, and Maki means roll. Spring so in roll. Japanese, he calls her Spring Roll. Oh, oh um, that reminds me of another uh, Japanese name thing that is a little bit different. So I, I just, I finished watching all the Danganronpa 3 anime, and because it's, you know, Hope Speak Academy and all that, they say the word hope a lot, and I was watching it in Japanese. Uh, the word for oh, yeah. hope is... Kibo, 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 Kibo. Kibo, yeah. Mm-hmm, yep. Oh, did we already cover that? And I'm, I'm just that was the fir- that was the first episode. I think Orin yeah. said it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn, I um, thought I was onto something real big here. That yeah. must be weird, though, to hear it over and over and over again and be like, <laughs> "Yeah, I get it." God. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. So predictably, of course, reading a sign- next one is the chapter three trial. Um, I believe, or actually, I should say, end of chapter three, because uh. You know, there's always, like, a little extra scene after the trial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should be a little shorter, I guess, because now we don't have to do the investigation. But, um, all right. I guess that's a wrap. Uh, see you next time, everybody. Bye, Inara. <laughs> bye, Inara. So long, farewell. It's that, that one's better than bye, Inara. <laughs> <laughs>